you're watching an Involve Me tutorial on integrating your projects with SendPulse. This integration allows you to automatically send participant submissions directly into your SendPulse mailing lists and CRM pipelines. So once you have your project open, on the top bar, you can click on Connect, which will take you to all the different integrations. Alternatively, if you're within your workspaces, you can use the arrow right here and then click on Connect, which will open the same menu. Then you scroll down until you find the integration that you want to use. For us, it's going to be SendPulse, which is right here. And then I'm going to click on Connect. As you can see, there are a few things that we need from SendPulse. The connection name, which we can set up ourselves. And then I need the SendPulse API ID and API secret. So let's take a look at how we can get those. So once you're inside of SendPulse, you're going to click on your profile and go to account settings. And in your account settings, you're going to click on API. Here you see both the ID and the secret. So I'm going to copy ID and put it right here and then copy the secret and paste it right here and then simply click on connect. Next, we have the SendPulse entity dropdown. Here we select what entity we want to use for our integration. We either can select the contacts on an email list or contacts in CRM. Depending on your choice, the integration will either add participants to your email lists or create new deals in your CRM pipelines. If you choose contacts on email lists, you will then need to select the specific email lists you want to use. If you choose CRM, you'll need to select the pipeline, step and assign a team member. And now let's dive into data mapping. The SendPulse integration will automatically send participant email addresses and default properties to SendPulse. So as you can see right here, email and project name. Creating custom fields in SendPulse CRM allows you to map additional data from your Involve Me projects. For example, if you want to capture data like title, gender, or quiz scores, you'll need to create these fields inside of the SendPulse CRM. When you're in your SendPulse account, you can click on Contacts, and then on Settings, and then on Fields. These fields are used to store and organize data. Creating custom fields in the SendPulse CRM allows you to map additional data from your Involve Me projects. For example, if you want to capture data like title, gender, or quiz scores, you'll need to create these fields in the SendPulse CRM. On your screen right now, you can see the different Involve Me fields and the different SendPulse fields that you need to set up inside of SendPulse for the integration to work properly. So for example, I would want to set up the city field, and I'm going to use the string field type and then add. And just like that, I have a city string created inside of SendFalls. You can see, for example, for date and birth, the type that I added was date and time. In general, the string field type is used to enter up to 255 text characters. Number, as the name suggests, is used to enter numbers. To specify time and date, you choose the date and time field. With link, you can add a clickable link into a contact card. And for example, choosing checkbox, you can create a field to indicate the presence or absence of certain conditions, options, or parameters. And the field type list can be used to select one or more values from a predefined set. When creating a deal, for example, you can select one or more preset options. With this, you could also specify the option to allow multiple choices. And of course, to make a field required, you need to check the Make It Required checkbox. It is important to note, for email lists, no variables need to be created. All variables are automatically sent to SendPulse. I can actually show it to you how it looks like. If I go to Email, and then I click on Mailing Lists, and you can see I have two emails in my mailing list from the tests I did beforehand. And here I can see everything from Involve Me nicely put right here and I can edit it or I can delete it. I can do whatever I want with it inside of SendPulse. Keep in mind that if you duplicate a project with existing SendPulse integration, the integration settings will be duplicated as well, saving you time. Also, for email lists, if the same contact email is received from different submission, the existing contact will be updated rather than creating a new one. In CRM pipelines, however, each submission creates a new deal and the previous deals are updated with the latest information. And below here, you can see fields that once created within SendPulse will be mapped automatically to Involve Me. And once the field is automatically mapped, this message will disappear. Involve Me submissions can also automatically assign tags 
in the SendPulse CRM. I cannot show you directly how this is done because it requires a paid SendPulse plan. However, you can activate these tags in your project's integration setup, also under Manage Tags and Custom Fields. You can turn on these tags for different kinds of submission data, such as outcomes, project name, answers from questions, and when opt-in checkbox was ticked. This will allow you to trigger different actions in your SendPulse account or help organize your incoming data. Also be aware that if you want to use tags, you do not necessarily have to have custom fields. They can be used independently. This function is only available for CRM pipelines and tags are not available for email lists. Now that you know how to use your integration, let's talk about some of the most common issues that you might have when trying to use an integration. I'm going to be showcasing this with one random integration, but just so you know, these principles are applicable to pretty much every application that Involve Me has. So let's take a look. Let's first talk about the opt-in checkbox and the only trigger integration when opt-in checkbox element was selected. This option is recommended to be ticked for GDPR purposes, but ultimately it is up to you whether you want the integration to trigger once user consent has been collected or not. What often happens is users enable this option, but then do not set up the checkbox properly in order for the integration to trigger. So in case GDPR or similar purposes are not of any use for this, we recommend not having this option triggered. However, if you do need to trigger it, let's actually take a look at how you would set this up. So I am going to trigger only trigger integration when opt-in checkbox element was selected, and I'm gonna hit save. And once I hop into the editing part of my project, I'm going to look up opt-in checkbox in the elements and then drag and drop it right here. And then once I click on it, you can see under options on your right side, the send data to integration. So what you're gonna wanna do is click on this and find the integration that you would like to send the data to. Or if you have multiple integrations by scrolling all the way down, you could just check all integrations and not have to worry about adding more integrations in the future. Also, make sure if you do put in this checkbox to have this enabled. Checkbox is required. Otherwise, your audience might fill in the form, not check the checkbox, and then what ends up happening is your integration doesn't get triggered. If you set it up like this, the integration will only be triggered once a submission has been completed and the audience member has also given the consent on the opt-in checkbox that triggers the integration. If the opt-in checkbox was not selected, then the integration will not trigger even if the participant finishes the project. If you do not need to gather user opt-ins, simply do not tick this checkbox. And this way the data will be integrated once the submission is finished. So how do you actually see the status of your integration? By going to responses in the top bar menu, then clicking on responses again, and then choosing the specific response. By scrolling down, you can see the status of your integration. As you can see, one of my integrations has been triggered and the other one has not. The successful trigger has been indicated by the check mark next to my integration. If the integration is grayed out, it means that it is connected but has not yet been triggered. There are two other states for integrations that you can see on your screen right now. And the other statuses include pending or failed. If an integration fails, it will have a description that will help you further troubleshoot the issue if necessary. Make sure to click on the exclamation mark icon to get more information about the error itself. So what happens to this grayed out integration? Well, you can actually trigger the integration retroactively. By clicking on the integration, you can choose to send submission data to MailChimp or any other submission that you have manually simply by clicking send now. And of course, you do not have to do this for every single one of your past integrations. What you can do is click this checkbox, send for all submissions for which the integration has not yet been executed. You check this, send now. You can see that the status is pending. So that means that we're waiting for the integration to be triggered. And what will happen now is that this submission, as well as all of my past submissions will be sent. Some other notes are that most integrations require an email address for them to work, but on your screen right now, you can see the notable exceptions to this rule. Feel free to pause the video and see which integrations this is about. If you have any other more specific issues that you are having trouble solving, make sure to contact our support team and they will be able to help you in no time. And now back to the ending of the main integrations video. And just like that, you now know how to integrate SendPulse with InvolveMe. If you need more support, you can go to health.involve.me. And good luck getting involved.